everyone, this is Jackie from Bronze Bobbles, and I'm so excited to bring you another interesting video. In this video, I'll be doing a Bronx Tale where I'll do a book review, and I'm also going to be doing a Bronx Bobble Box where I go into my jewelry box and pull out a couple of pieces to show you. And this video is on Jade. If Jade is something that you're interested in learning a little bit more about and maybe a little history on it and also a sneak peek at my Jade collection, then this video is for you and stay with me. And so why don't we just get this video started? So the book I'm going to be reviewing is Jade by Fred Ward. Fred Ward does a lot of these types of books. They're like almost like a pamphlet. They're very, very small. You can read them in one night. And he does them on different types of gemstones, including emerald and pearls and diamonds and how to take care of your gemstones and things like that. They're real quick, good uh, reads. As you can see, Bad Bunny got to this book too. She's a very, very bad little girl. But we're trying to train her so she can stop nibbling on my books. But I digress. Back to Jade. This book was a really, really interesting read because quite honestly, I felt like I just didn't know enough about Jade. You know, Jade is one of those really complex stones and um, you really have to understand it well to know what to buy and spend your money on. And honestly, I had no clue. So I wanted to get started with a book that maybe could just whet my appetite. This is exactly what this book does. This book is not intended for you to become an expert because there's no way that you're going to become an expert in a book that's only 64 pages long i mean that th there's so much to jade it's one of those really complicated stones that you just can't really tell like i think diamonds are easier to identify and figure out more so than jade but this book was a really good book to give you a, just a basic understanding. I mean, I, you're not going to be able to go out into the wild and pick out Jade and willy-nilly know whether it's real or not just by reading this book. But what it will do is maybe give you an idea of where Jade, the Jade that you're looking at has, has come from. And also, it's one of these books where it, um, it leads you down the path of jade maybe you can learn a little bit more what i love the most about this book is the fabulous pictures and um it's just full of these great pictures and as you can see my book is pretty much destroyed um but that's okay this is look at that beautiful gemstone right there uh, so these books this book really helps you with taking a look at jade it also does a good job with speaking on jade in regards to china uh, burma or as well as new zealand but where it didn't dive into enough i didn't feel was jade that's discovered in america and jade that's in canada in fact one of the largest producing places that your jade would probably have come from could be canada and it does this book just just had like one page on it. Um, so um, so if you're really looking for a book that's in depth, this perhaps is not your book. One of the other things I liked about this book is that because of the fabulous pictures, you can see the difference between the carvings in China uh, as opposed to the carvings in New Zealand and the carvings in Central America. They're really distinct carvings. Um, and this, this book really opened my eyes to that because previous to that, you know, I only thought of jade as, a, as an Asian stone, but really it's, it's a stone from all throughout the world. And the interesting thing was that jade was, um, was a stone that was used in the emperors. And when the emperors died, they made these full on bodysuits of jade. Uh, and they did that in China, as well as in Mexico. So even though they're worlds apart and the worlds necessarily did not collide, there was very a lot of similarities in the way the stone was used. I mean, jade was a stone that was discovered millennia ago. It was such an ancient, gemstone and in fact one of the things i learned about from this book is how 
adorable jade really is i always thought of jade as being the stone that's like glass and so if it falls on the floor it's just going to shatter like glass does but it's actually used in prehistoric times as uh, um, that they were constructed axes and hammers out of jade and clubs um for warriors with these jade it's more durable than even like diamonds and, and other gemstones and that was something that surprised me because i really didn't realize how durable jade really is um the other thing i learned from this book is that jade is a bit of a misnomer in that there are actually two different stones under the umbrella of jade and that is nephrite and jadeite they're two distinct different stones. Their compositions are different. When you look them under the microscope, they actually, the, the, the structure is different. One is more durable. I believe it's the nephrite. And one is more scratch resistant, which is the jadeite. They're both in the Mohs scale of hardness, of, I think about a seven or on average. Um, so that's pretty hard for a stone. And so that's what this book showed me. Um, but I really feel that in order for you to know Jade, you really have to touch it. You gotta feel it you, because Jade is so complex. There is treated Jade, there's color treated, there's, they put polymers inside certain Jade. There's a huge difference between Jade and Nephrite. nephrite is also a darker color stone. And it's considered maybe value-wise, not as expensive as jadeite. Jadeite is more precious. Um, and jadeite you find in Burma, as an example. One of the expensive uh, gems in jadeite is uh, um, Imperial Jade, which is this beautiful, almost the color of my dress that I'm wearing right now. And it's more translucent. And so, People revere both. The number one producer of Imperial Jade is in Burma. And in fact, when the Chinese discovered, because the number one people who buy Jade happens to be in the Chinese market. But Jade is becoming more popular as, as they discover it in different places. In fact, the number one producer of, Burma, of Jade is in Burma. And there's plentiful Imperial Jade in Burma, however, to get to it, you have to go through an incredible forest. There's malaria, these mosquitoes that bite you and you're dead within 48 hours. There's monsoon season uh, that blocks any sort of travel in and out of Burma. There's dust clouds, because after the monsoons, um, the, the, it gets dry and that dry turns into this big dust bowl. Um, and then there's the political unrest because if they find you in Burma, you might not be able to get out alive. And then there's that, that challenge of getting to where the jade is. A lot of times you need big elephants. And so it's not an easy place. It's very, um, it's, it's a very unforgiving place to find these gemstones. So it's, it's a little challenging. It's not like you could just go there and get it. Whereas in California, you can find jade and swim in the ocean and find it. Um, and as well as in Canada, you can find big boulders of jade and uh, they produce plentiful jade. And in Guatemala, as an example, there was a time where people didn't believe that jade came out of Guatemala until the 1980s and the 1990s when they discovered that there really is jade in Guatemala. And the story behind that, from what I understand, is that when the Spanish conquistadors came and did the uh, the, the Spanish um, conquests to change people, uh, change the people's religion into Catholicism. You know, the Guatemalans revered Jade and they prayed and worshiped these deities that were made with Jade. And when the conquistadors saw them worshiping, worshiping to deities, they would kill them. So the Guatemalans quickly learned that if they wore Jade, they might not survive. So for many, many hundreds of years, they just forgot 
about this whole jade culture until the 1960s and then the 70s it got a little bit more popular and then they did an article in the National Geographic and then in the 1980s and 90s it boomed and now the Guatemalans are revering and and discovering their their jade which is a little bit more on the bluer side than some of the other jades what do I think about this book I say that if you just want a book to just scratch the surface of jade, if you want to know a book about maybe the different styles of carving in jade and where they're discovered, this is a good book. If you want to look at some really fabulous pictures, this is a great book. If you're looking to understand jade where you can pick it out in the wild and know exactly what it is, you're not gonna get that from this book. And quite honestly, I think the only way that you're going to get that is by actually visiting the experts, the people who know it well. You have to put it in your hands because when you touch jade, it's cold to the touch, but that's not the only thing that can tell you that it's jade. You could ping it with another jade and you hear this little ring. Um, and then honestly, you have to take it into the GIA or buy from a reputable place like Mason K, uh, who sell just natural jade to really get the good quality jade because you're not going to be able to tell just by looking at jade whether it's real or not. You might get an idea whether it could be real or could maybe not real. Um, some things are right out straight fake jade and you know right off the bat that they are, but it's really, really hard to tell. And so a book like this is not gonna really help you with that. Um, but even still, I think this is a great book um, and a quick read. And that's my book review. I give this a thumbs up. So let's take a sneak peek into my Bronx Bobble Box and my Jade Collection. So in my Jade Collection, there's a combination of Jadeite, Nephrite. Remember, those are two stones under the title of jade. Neither one of them is jade per se, but both of them are jade. Kind of complicated, isn't it? Jade is one of those stones that will drive you bananas. This jade bracelet is made with jade chips. And I recently purchased this at a thrift store and they also sprinkled a little bit of Aurora Borealis stones. And I think, you know what? I think I'm gonna keep this on. I think it looks great with the outfit that I'm wearing, don't you? This is a necklace that has these beautiful, beautiful green stones and made to look like imperial jade, but I can assure you that it's not. The clasp here is made with 925, so the clasp here is sterling and there's four strands. And the color on this is just amazing and i think that this stone is made with i don't know maybe it's made with cheap jade and then they impregnate it with this color of this beautiful beautiful imperial jade and i just think it's fabulous now of course this is not real um so if it was real this would probably be a multi-million dollar stone this sort of reminds me of barbara hutton's amazing multi-million dollar uh, imperial jade necklace that was just to die for. Now here is a faux jade necklace. That means it's fake. It's resin. It's a pretty heavy, thick bangle. Um, it has this marbling effect just like jade would and it's made by Kenneth J. Lane. I just think this is just so beautiful. It really, really is an incredible bracelet, but it's fake, it's, it's made with plastic. But these are just as beautiful as, as jade. Here is a couple of more jade bangles. And these are various different materials used for these bangles. Um, here is a bangle that's made, I think from glass, actually. I don't think that this is a real jade. Of course, I can't tell because even though I read the book, I'm nowhere near an expert. Um, this here, there's two of these bangles, and these are made with plastic, but they're so beautifully made, um, and it looks just like jade. That's really, really fabulous. And I think here is another jade bangle 
and I think this is real. This was given to me by my former sister-in-law, who's Chinese, and she also gave me this bracelet here. This bracelet here comes with these diamond cuts. Now, everybody thinks that jade is green, and that's the most popular color of jade, but it also comes in other colors. Let me show you. Here's another color that jade comes in, and it's lavender. This beautiful, beautiful lavender jade. Now, I'm not sure if this is real lavender or if this is glass. I know that it's made to look like, if not real, lavender jade. And if you look at uh, jade, the number one color is green, but the second color is these this lavender color. And here is another lavender. Now, this I happen to think is glass. Um, but together I think it looks fabulous. Here is another color of jade and it's this gray color. Of all the colors of jade, this is probably the least expensive as far as desirability. Um, and these things, the, this color is typically used just like it is right here on statues, little things, tabletop or stuff. Um, there is some jewelry made from it. But most people want the green, and the number one green color that they like is Imperial Jade, which is that beautiful translucent, uh, greeny color that's just hard to describe because it's so gorgeous. And what I like about this is that it comes in its own stand. And I actually found this in two separate places at the thrift store. Somehow I knew they went together. Like, wait a minute, this goes together, and look at that, like a puzzle piece. It did. I show this on my recent video. Um, this is a piece that I bought myself for uh, Christmas for 2022. I've since learned a little bit more about it. This has the phoenix and the dragon. And what I understand is that usually these two symbols go together. The dragon being the yang, which is the male counterpart. He's the sun and the female is the phoenix. She's the yang yin to his yang, and she is symbolic of darkness and the moon. And uh, so together they bring in the counterparts of both good luck and longevity and protection and the female and the male, the yin, the yang, the moon, the stars, the light, the dark, all of that. And this has, is on top of a piece of jade. And this jade is nephrite. Nephrite is very common in China. That's the type of jade that comes out of China. Um, and um, this has 18 karat with all these different types of gemstones on it. It's a beautiful, beautiful piece. And I love it so very much. Here is another piece of jewelry that I have that's made with jade. This depicts the phoenix, which is, as I described before, the yin. And she is... Um, she is a beautiful, beautiful carved jade. And this, I believe, is jadeite. And you can tell the difference between nephrite and jadeite because nephrite tends to be a little bit on the darker side and jadeite tends to be on the lighter side. And so this is probably the lighter shade of jade. And then to the top of that spectrum is the imperial jade that everybody saw, saw, everybody's so crazy over. Here is another one of my favorite, favorite pieces. I found this in the wild. I was super excited when I got it and I knew nothing about it. Um, this is a piece of nephrite jade and it's probably from China. Um, there's this symbolic uh, clouds and I'm sure there's some sort of meaning to it. At the moment, I don't know what it is, but I'm sure at some point I might find out. Um, and it has this sterling silver piece here and there's about, I don't know, 30 or 40 individual cords of silk uh, has this beautiful beautiful nephrite jade class where cord goes over it and just look at this stunning piece isn't this just incredibly beautiful i just love it i used to call this spinach jade but now i understand it to be nephrite jade here is another jade necklace that i found in the wild this looks like nephrite jade um, it sort of does look kind of color treated when you look at it closely. You can see the speckles in there. It's definitely jade that they made uh, to look a little bit brighter than what it should be. But it really is a still a stunning, just a, a, a nice piece to layer with. I, I really like this piece a lot. Here is a pair of jade 
fish carved earrings and these are super cute so excited when i found these in the wild um fish is, is for abundance and auspiciousness you should wear these earrings with this necklace um, um and i'm looking through this necklace and you can see some of the translucency which is something that in jade um people revere especially the imperial jade and i can see it too with these these uh fish these are really really nice you can hear the way it clangs that tells you that it's jade the way that 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 sound that clanging sound it looks like it's singing a little bit love it here is another piece of jade this one's sort of in the shape of a heart and when you see the light the striations and the different shades of green from light to darker this is a really really sweet piece uh, made with a sterling silver encasement really 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 pretty here is some jade buddha statues this one is a cute little buddha this i would say would be more in the jadeite and this buddha is more in the nephrite so that can show you possibly some of the differences between jadeite and nephrite I th that, that's how you can tell just by the color here is a ring uh, a, a vintage ring that has uh, a molten jadeite full it's fake but it's made to look like jade and i think they do a really really good job with this stone last but certainly not least are these carved beautiful uh screw back earrings and the motif is a little bit of a flower pattern it's a little crude um carving it's not very distinct um but they're still sweet and they're in a casing of sterling silver and um they're really really sweet earrings so my friends that's my jade collection and my quick little book review go check out that book and i hope that you enjoy this video as much as i did putting it together so let me know which one of these pieces is your favorite i would say for me my favorite would probably be this piece right here because i remember how super excited i was when i found it in the wild and um love to know a little bit more about that so if anybody out there knows please let me know and of course one of my favorites is uh, this piece here it's one of my recent acquisition and it has absolutely nothing to do with the fact that it's real gold with real gemstones it's the story behind the two creatures and the yin and the yang and the female and the male and the moon and the stars and i just i just get caught up in stories and i love it when pieces like this really tell a story just you know when you first look at it, it just looks like a piece of jewelry but people like me know their stories behind it so i think this will be one of my favorites as well so tell me which one is your favorite so if this is a video that you like watching hit like hit subscribe and leave me a comment i really appreciate you guys giving me all your support love you guys so much and so con mucha mucha amor